computer. Hey, everybody, how are you? <laughs> Recording in progress. Okay. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. I think we're okay. I think we're uh, we're uh, on our on our way with our little Monday show that we just do here for the hell of it. Let me just go over to Facebook to make sure that it's uh, that it's doing what it's got to do. Uh, and uh, there we go. Okay, so everything's fine. Everything's cool. Um, and um, let me uh, start admitting a lot of people. Admit all. Here we go. Here's a whole bunch of people. Boy, okay. Well, first of all, we got Mandy. Hello, Mandy. She's in the first place up there. And then there's Rick. And then there's Mike Chisholm. And there's Steve Bender, who looks much shorter here than he really is in real life. Edward Berger, whose voice is not like really like that. He actually, That's right. He, he sounds just like Helen Keller in his normal voice. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Wallace, Len LaFrisco, and Jeff Stein. Hi to all of you. Hey, hey, happy man. Monday. How's it going? Nice shirt. Hi, Ducky. Oh, oh, you like my shirt? Yeah. I got this. Yeah. In the, I got this in China. It, wow. Uh, Barack Obama as a uh, Chinese um, army guy. So. And by you mean Canal Street? Huh? No, no. <laughs> by no. you mean Canal Street? No, we bought, I bought this in China. This was they, they were selling these all over China, and I I got two or three of them. So that that's I, awesome. Yeah, I've never I don't wear it out on the street at all. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody will get the joke. Okay. Oh, but if you were lead singer in a band, that'd be the shirt to wear while you perform. Oh yeah, no, no question about it. Let me see here. Here's uh, let's see, Scott Boddicker is here and uh um there we go okay where where are we we oh. and we should be joined by marjorie soon and whatever yeah. how are you all doing today uh uh, uh shecky how are you doing today a little loopy but basically fine i'm in, i'm in loopy today too but i got up early was the problem uh because i i got up around eight and i couldn't go back to sleep well, I stayed up late, so I slept. I was going to go to Costco today, but then it was like, yeah, forget it. You know, <laughs> what does our life become when our major decision in life is, should I go to Costco today or shouldn't I go to Costco today? It, that was literally my day. <laughs> that was literally your day. And you decided not to go. No, I didn't go. <laughs> now, let's uh, let's uh, uh, look at this a little bit and, and look at the, the, the decision making here. What made you decide not to go to Costco? It was that infamous, I do that visual scan of the store in my head and go, I don't really need anything. <laughs> now, here's the other thing. Uh, Costco, have you checked out the meat prices lately? That's oh, anywhere. Oh, Costco. my God. Everybody. I mean, it's like I, 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 if I want to buy a steak, I'm going to have to actually borrow money from Shecky, I think, is what I'm going to have to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, but the flank steaks, last time I was there, I think it was like $40. Really? They used to be $20. Yeah, you know, because they sell, you know, it's you, you know, you, it's three pounds or whatever, but. Oh, just, it's, it's it just, even, you know, ground beef is in the five, is six, seven, eight dollars a pound yeah. or more. Their salmon yeah. is still pretty reasonable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Costco's yeah. great, but I hear everything is freaking expensive. Our gas is very close to five dollars a gallon right now. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, So it's happening, folks. We're seeing it happen now. What? Inflation. They printed too much money. Inflation is starting to. It's starting. No, to I don't think. No, I don't think that's not inflation. Uh, but, but wait, I'll tell you. The guy is the, 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 the only person the here with it. an actual financial degree is Rick. Rick, can you answer that question? Is it is it that we're printing too much money? I think it's more the cost of trucking produce or whatever in from wherever to stores is more expensive now. Also, or is um yeah what was it? It was Len said five dollars a gallon. So what do you think a truck is? How much gas is the truck going to yeah. have to pump into get it? Drivers. They can't get drivers. That's they can't really. get drivers too, or they're going to pay them more. Yeah. So the cost of goods go up because 
the cost of getting them to the store has gone up. Why are we not seeing that in the numbers? You know, I don't see a lot of discussion around the, 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 the inflation going up to a ridiculous amount. Everything's more expensive in the last six months. And yet the numbers don't seem to, to, to show it. And the stock market is doing great. So where, where the is stock the market I mean, hit a whole all time high last week? Yeah. Wasn't it an all time high last week? Yeah. Stock market. What? The stock market. The stock market. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I always argue that the stock market doesn't really translate itself into your pocket. No. no. It only translates itself into the pocket of people who have stock. Exactly. Yes. It can be, yeah. it, it can be indicative of what else is going out there, too. Just yeah. like interest rates. Uh, you know, if interest rates are going up, that can be indicative of the other things that are happening. Well, I mean, like, it, oh, it, no. you, you just have to look around you. Have you seen the price of hookers lately? <laughs> <laughs> <They're just laughs> astronomical. That's also supply and demand, but we can get into that too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason that Social Security's cost of living increase is 5.9%. Yeah, that's high. Well, everybody went, oh, we're going to get 5.9% more. Well, they don't realize it's a cost of living increase, which yeah. means things are just more expensive. Yeah, you know, it's it's ridiculous, you know. Well, you know, we had inflation in the 70s, you know, during the Jimmy Carter era. So it's not something new. When when my car loan was 17 and a half percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. And I don't banks know. were giving you 10 percent on a CD, for instance, back they then. They were. Yeah, I was getting 11. I, I don't know if Becky would agree with this or not. But when I was coming up and, and going through my my schooling and my training for for, for my career, they said that many times when, like the Depression, for example, there was reasons for that. And every single time an event, an epic event happens like that, they try and, you know, board up the windows so that mistake doesn't happen again. Hyperinflation in the 80s, interest rates going up, mortgage rates at 18, 19%. That happened for a reason. So then they boarded up the windows for that. And every time something new happens, it's something new because mm -hmm. we've prepared for the other stuff. And it's the, the intangibles that create the the new event. I don't know if that's this. This all discussion just all started when I said, is, "Have you seen the price of meat lately?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how's the price of meat down in Georgia, Mandy? Um, I guess it's okay. I mean, as a matter of fact, when I was in the store, I think it was Friday night. Mm -hmm. All the shelves were really bare, and I was probably just being a spoiled brat. I asked somebody, "I said, what's going on?" You know, as I was checking myself out because they also don't have cashiers. <laughs> Um, I said, what's going on? Like, I couldn't find my tea that I like and this and that. And she said, oh, we just get what we get. And she said, well, but it's true. All those we're tigers. not going to chicken and beef. So get ready. And I was like, am I supposed oh, to be bro. pregnant? But it's true. <laughs> yeah, we got all these boats full of stuff that can't get to. A spoil. lot of it is yeah. there's medicine on there. Medicine. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to start to spoil. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be wasted on Shecky because Shecky quit all his medicine. So, yeah. you know, yeah. How's that you working? feel better, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. You know, I think if I stopped taking my pills every day, I would feel better. Oh and it's a year God. and a half a year since I stopped. That. Yeah. <laughs> what did your doctor say about that, Shaggy? <laughs> Last time I saw him, when he checked me out and did the blood work, he said, you're fine. Wow. As I said, I stopped all the medication and he goes, it's no, no problem. Wow. Oh. Okay. All right. You know, because again, I had high blood pressure, so I had a medication for that. Now mm -hmm. I have low blood pressure. <laughs> I, you know, and I had, you know, so all those, you know, the cholesterol medication, my cholesterol was under control. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good. By the way, we've been joined by Trucker Steve, who occasionally calls our nighttime show, <laughs> and he has been, uh, he, he had kidney problems there for a while. How are, how are you doing with those? Uh, I'm okay. You're okay? Yeah, I'm good. What do you do? Three days a week, you do the dialysis and stuff? Yeah, and, and the dates have changed. Uh, we used to go on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now I go Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Mm, okay. Well, that kind At of one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, boy. Mm. And how long does it take? Three hours, something like that? Yeah, uh, they've been doing me four hours now. Four hours? Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Slow blood, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I go. I go in for an oil change every two days. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, uh, 
I'm glad to see that at least you're alive. You're looking healthy. You're looking healthier actually than yeah. you you ever looked since I've seen you. And um, what about getting a transplant? Uh, nothing yet. Um, hopefully soon within, I don't know, a few months. Yeah. Um, but I'm going in for sub, uh, what they call a fistula, which they take a vein and a nerve and uh, like join them together. Mm -hmm. And instead of having this thing sticking out of my chest, they just put two needles in my arm every two days. Oh. Yeah. And that way I can actually go swimming and have a regular normal shower. Um, yeah. Instead of because they're what they're this problem is prone to is infection. Yeah. yeah. Because there's the opening where the where the hose goes into my yeah. into my body. So this way they just do need it goes right to my heart, actually. I know you get the show up there. Have you ever seen this com comedy show called Be Positive? I haven't seen it, but I've read, seen the ads on it. Yeah, it's about a guy who who goes through dialysis. It's a mm -hmm. comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, funny. Shecky, uh, Shecky and I especially like that show, right, Shecky? <laughs> yeah, well, they rejiggered the show. Oh, it's here. about, Alex. You started to say. What? You started to say what it's about. Well, it's about a guy who, who needs a kidney. And so he's going through dialysis. And the, the little group he hangs out with are all the people in dialysis. And then he he has a, a woman he knew when he was in high school who offers him a kidney. So it, 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 it's a, but it's it's a comedy. He managed to, uh, Chuck Lorre can find humor in the most dour of subjects. And yeah, but now he's got the kidney, so they're moving to a different direction. Yeah, they're moving in a different direction. Yeah. But uh, that, you know, it, it, it's got a great theme song. It's the only theme song in television history, I think, with the word crap in it. So. <laughs> but anyway, well, good to see you, uh, Trucker Steve. You know, Thank you. it's nice to see that you're, you're at least looking healthier. And now we want to see you really healthy, you know, but that'll mm -hmm. help with the kidney. Hello, Scott Boddicker. How's everything in the home of Snapple in Plano, Texas? It's a beautiful day in Plano. <laughs> beautiful day in Plano. Yeah. Really? Nice, about, oh, low, low 80s, I think. Wait a second, I don't know. Yeah, just just sunny. Oh, 85, but no humidity. It's, it's nice and went to the gym today and... Oh, good. Had a good time working out. So. It's 72 okay. degrees here right now. We're okay, but we have a nor'easter coming tonight. Oh, do we really? It's mm. tonight. Uh, tonight and all day tonight. And, and tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to get it forever. We had quite the rain shower yesterday. I mean, for California, we must have got where I live, maybe four or five inches, a little further north, eight to 10, 12 inches. I mean, a lot of rain. I mean, it, you know, it's, fun, it's funny that we're talking about weather here, but in, in the case of California, all of a sudden they've gone from forest fires yeah. to rainstorms, yeah. which will then cause yeah. landslides because yeah. there are no trees to hold back the dirt. Yep. California. It's already, ha it's already happened. <laughs> yeah. There's yes. Trees down everywhere. Vancouver uh, and Vancouver Island just had the same storm hit it it's further north right mm -hmm. and the yeah. winds were so bad that as you can imagine it's a port city shipping containers everywhere right well there's a ship with shipping containers wow. yeah they all went in the sea and a bunch of the containers fell into the water hazardous oh. material they're having a hard time with the fires and all that stuff it's actually wow national news up here yeah they're getting slammed right now wow this is the end of the world as we know it i really well, believe it's the, end that. Of, it's the end of the human race not today <laughs> well, probably well, not, not today, a but <laughs> in the next <laughs> couple of weeks, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that'd be okay. You know, we're like living in the middle of a disaster movie. <laughs> you know. Well, did you see the anti-vaxxers were protesting outside of um, the Barclays Center in faith because Kyrie Irving won't get vaccinated? That you know, you should let him play. Uh, I don't think he should be allowed to play till he gets the shot. School. Yeah, but they had, they basically had a riot outside of the Barclays Center yesterday. Oh, in wonder. In support of Kyrie Irving's stand. 
<laughs> of course. It, you know, I never heard anybody ever complaining about vaccinations. Kids get them all the time in order to go to school. You get your flu shot every the year. The millennials started it. The millennials started it. And then their kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll be devil's advocate because I'm dual backs and all that. But I think the people who started having people in their families have reaction, Bell's palsy on some of the other things that have happened. Those are the people that started it. And it's such a small number, but the cases are so heartbreaking that they tug on our heartstrings and we think that it's bigger than it is. Yeah, but if, if you get, let's say you go get the shot and then you get Bell's palsy, the two have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to do with each other. But they unless, forget their, unless you like, want to make that association. Yeah, but they forget very quickly. They needed all those shots to get in the kindergarten. Oh, your phone is ringing, dear. I got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Man Mandy, uh, 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 if your kids were of that age, would you make them, would you take them down and give them the, you know, the shot? You mean if they were young? The vaccine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, my older daughter, she got vaccinated like in March, even though she's only, was only 25, but she, because she volunteered mm -hmm. at the school to be able to get it. Yeah. Okay. She was so hyped about it. My other daughter was the opposite and was, I'm not getting it. I've already had COVID. I'm good. I, I don't but know what are They say you're, you, that you are good, but for only a couple of months. Right. Yeah. So we've been kind of on her and she told me, I just saw her this weekend and she told me she was getting it. So I was like, Bravo. Good, good. how many here have had their third shot? Ah. Wednesday. Huh? Wednesday. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> you hear that um, no Noam Chomsky is taking all this grief because he's saying now that if you don't get vaccinated, fine, that's your right. But then you should be segregated and isolated from the rest of society so you absolutely. absolutely i agree, right. I agree. Right. Good idea. nobody says you have to get the shot but nobody says we have to put up with you right no he's i think yeah. he's absolutely right yeah well you know that's my logic is put them on a cruise ship take them 90 miles <laughs> offshore <laughs> And yeah, let them have a nice life there. And and by the way, leave them <laughs> out that there. Was, leave them out really there for, for a couple of months. And by the time you're through, you can bring back in the, a ship of just dead bodies. <laughs> you know. Well, I think the reason why Mackenzie, I mean, I thought she, I raised her smart enough to trust science, but the <laughs> reason she gave me, I mean, I think it was mainly out of just fear of being inconvenienced. Like she realized, you know, I may not be able to, like she wants to move to New York when she graduates. She, I might be able to do things in New York. I may not be able to travel certain places. I may not be able to go to New country. York. It's, it's kind of like if you were a smoker, most mm -hmm. people quit smoking just so they could eat in restaurants. You know, there were- they went just, outside of the restaurant. They didn't want to become an outsider. Right. right? And and that's what's happening now with this. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Don't get vaccinated, but don't don't get your cooties around me. You know, right. I don't want you in the same restaurant with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have the right not to get the shot. You also have the right to not be able to participate in a lot of the activities of your community. That's right. I, yeah. I but I mean, I. Okay, so I just, yeah. This, let me be devil's advocate. I want to know if you think I'm part of the problem. So for me, I get clients who come and see me and yeah. I've made the decision that I've been dual vax and I take a lot of precautions and, and yeah. yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, I will still see clients who aren't vaccinated here in my office. Do you think I'm part of the problem? Yes. <laughs> you should have. I, uh, uh, well, I, I, I don't, agree. I, Fair enough. Do you think he's part of the problem, everybody? Well, you know, yeah. And what happens when you get a breakthrough case, Mike? Yeah. You know, I know, but at the end of the day, I'm not circumventing any laws except for the law, the court of public opinion. Like, like obviously if my government tells me different, I'm going to act different, but I am working in accordance with all of our local regulations and things. Well, and if a breakthrough case hits me- Are they I'm, masked? Go ahead. What's Are that? Are they masked? They're masked until they get into my personal office. Uh, I could have personal oh, decision <laughs> Tell them to keep their mask on, and sometimes I do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, "Let's mask up for this." Um, and then there are some where I know them and I know where they're at. Like one buddy of mine, he's got long COVID, yeah. and so he can't get vaccinated. His doctor will not let him get vaccinated. So because he's got what? He's got long. He's got long, long COVID. 
What's what's long COVID? That's the last long time. It stays with you for you know. Oh, he still uh, yeah. has COVID. I see. No, no, no. He has long COVID. It's a different. It's not like having COVID. He's not contagious. He's not anything. But his body, unfortunately, has had um, a long term reaction to it. And you'll see more and more about. Oh, I see. COVID. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to be rude. But why? Why would you put yourself and your loved ones and your yeah. family at risk for these idiots? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't feel that I am. Uh, well, you are, though. I mean, you know, I mean, no one thinks that they are until they get it. It's like no one thinks I'm going to get killed in a drunk driving accident until they uh, until it happens. Until it happens. Okay, I'll take it a few steps. I'll take the I don't think that I am to significantly more mindful than the example you just brought up. When we went through um, with our granddaughter and her cancer, and that was before COVID blew up, right? Mm -hmm. The precautions that we have put into our lives when it comes to disinfecting, when it comes to things well before COVID, um, because we had this 18 month year old month old who yeah. we had to be really fucking careful of when it came to that because she's so immune compromised. We put in some really strict things. So for example, if I have somebody who's in my office that wasn't vaccinated, when I get home, I do what we did the first two or three weeks of COVID. I stripped down all of those clothes, go into the laundry. I'm disinfecting. I'm just doing that before I even get home with when it comes to sanitizers and things like that. But you um, could have already breathed in their COVID germs. And yeah. I, and I, my antibody count, I've had an antibody test is really high. And I'm okay with that, that risk, knowing that if I get it, I have uh, a plan where I will isolate, I'll get over it in a couple of days and I'll be fine. Well, make uh, a few, make a few other plans, like, you know, where you want to be buried. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, your, your, gonna, your life insurance <laughs> policy is made out to your yeah, wife make and sure everything. Up to date. I also supplement zinc, quercetin, vitamin D. I also do a lot of things. You know, you know what that, that does. What that oh. does, Mike. And I don't want to be rude, but that really just gives you really expensive pee. I respectfully agree. <laughs> you know, you're almost you're like ivermectin here, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, I, I, we have this woman who lives in the building. Her name is Marcella, and she's a an elderly woman, but she's also an actress. And uh, I met her out on the street, and she said, "Oh, you're not wearing a mask." And I said, "Well, I've, you know, I've been triple dosed with this stuff. I, outside, I just don't do it." And, and she said, yeah, she said, but these people are crazy around here. That's why I'm saying it. She says, do you realize these people don't want to take the COVID vaccine because they say it's, you know, it's untested. It hasn't been around long enough. And yet these same dopes will take ivermectin, which isn't <laughs> even meant for human beings. <laughs> hey, hold that on. they'll do in a okay. second. Oh, on. we've got a Alex, cure for it. What? Alex, come yeah. on. Ivermectin has been literally issued billions of times for humans. It got rid of yellow fever. Okay, so let's not put disinformation out there. There is ivermectin for humans that you can get. It is so uh, prolific that the, the creators of it won the Nobel Prize. I mean, now I'm not saying it's useful for- Does COVID, everybody know this to be true? Because I don't it know is, this to be true. It is meant for humans. It's been issued billions of times. Yeah, I know that there is a dosage of ivermectin that humans take for things like parasites and stuff that's yeah, what it's meant that too, for. that too but if you do the research on it it's so it's generic it's it's been around for all right years. so let's say it's generic so's water so's a lot of other things that i don't think you're going to cure okay i don't think you're going to cure your uh, uh your covid with zinc not, okay or, I'm I don't, saying, yeah. let's at least call it what it is yeah. that's all I'm yeah but I mean, I mean, I, I don't think you're going to save your life with uh, zinc. OK, you know, no, 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 no. You what you do is you you bump up your immune system with these things. And so if you get it, your immune system is such that it will fight it. But I've also done antibody tests and other things. Well, too, antibody like, tests, it doesn't tell you how immune you are. It, 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 it just is tells you if you have an antibody for a particular thing. It, it, it gives <laughs> It's indicative of the strength that you have, though, yeah. in fighting it if you were to get it or if you've had it. It also can it can also point to if you've had it or not. Well, let me just say this so that YouTube doesn't take this show off, that uh, I have no way of proving he's right. So don't believe him. All right. OK, okay. Uh, that keeps me on the safe side.
<laughs> you know, Facebook gets very is very very particular now about. Oh, and they should do. talk. Right. It's yeah. so <laughs> well, metformin is prescribed prescribed to humans, so I'll take that for COVID. What? <laughs> so metformin is prescribed for humans, so yeah. I'll take that for COVID. Y yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, why, I rinse, prescribed I, for humans. I rinse with Listerine every day. That's supposed to kill germs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, this, I, this I, hear, I hear if you drink Lysol, that works. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> Duh. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Steve and I finally had lunch yesterday with he and his lovely hey! wife, and Marjorie. Uh, yeah. We, nice. And, and I meet up with him. And he says, well, I phone, he phones me. He says, where are you? He says, uh, just look for a tall guy. Um, <laughs> and I went, he doesn't look tall on the show. <laughs> he's how only tall, this big. How, how tall? Yeah, he's this big. How tall are you, Steve? Six, seven. Oh, wow. shit. Not once at lunch oh. did I ask you if they ever forced you to play basketball. Uh, <laughs> I, I was very impressed because people come up on the street all the time. And they just feel like really? they throw a ball at you. I was uh, I was on a cruise uh, uh, many years ago and ran into this guy who was about six seven or six eight. He introduced me to his wife who was about six four, mm -hmm. whatever. And then later on, he says, "Hey, come meet my kids." His eleven year old daughter was six one. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh my god!" <laughs> Apparently, I, I, I didn't know that that was height was necessarily genetic. Was you were your oh, parents yeah. tall, Steve? I mean, not as tall as I am. My dad was like six three, and my but my mom's like five eleven. So yeah, they're tall. And the other thing they do when you're in high school is, did you have a nickname? No. Oh, because I Your had name a friend. Bender, everyone just. I had me. a friend who was six seven when I was growing up in high school. He was six six, and everybody called him Shorty. Yeah. <laughs> they thought that was really funny to call him Shorty. And that's always, I wonder, you know, people asking me if I play basketball, is that a, is that a microaggression? <laughs> oh, you know, somebody could probably, probably uh, 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 sue them or something. Yeah, I no, I want to I start going up to short people and asking them. If we, had big, we had a big discussion <laughs> yesterday <laughs> about, uh, about just everybody, all the, all the woke stuff that's going on, you know, and how it's just crazy. It's just crazy. I mean that certain people can't work anymore, you know. And here comes Brian Neary. Oh boy, we got thirteen people right now. This is, you know, this is a a a a, 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 a what lucky thirteen. What? I don't see Brian. Lucky thirteen. There's Brian. I don't see him. Oh, maybe. Six, seven. Oh my God, I'm oh, six. There's Brian. Yeah, I'm there's Brian. Brian. Oh, do I look tall on this? There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm six four, and, and my friend just tagged me on a post. I'll, I'll tag you on it. But it's this guy, he's six seven, and he has a business card, and he says, "Yes, I'm six foot seven. And he says, "And uh, the temperature up here is the same as you." And I don't play basketball. But he has a business <laughs> card that he just hands out to everyone. <laughs> That's great. Well, wait a minute. How, uh, uh, you know, we don't we we really have no idea how tall anybody is here. Like, how tall would you say I am? I mean, don't don't answer, Steve, because you've seen me, and don't well, answer. I've, seen, Jeff, I've you've seen you, but that was like forty years ago. So maybe you shrunk by now. I'm going yeah. five. Ten. I'll throw it out there. Five ten. You're five ten. No, I'm going to throw out. I, Jackie, guess, I don't know what height. Ten. What height are you? How tall are you? Me? Yeah. Five, nine and a half, let's call it. Wow. No, no, Alex, I'm six feet. I'm just throwing my guess about you out there. I think you're five ten. I think you're six one, Alex. I think he's six, six one. Two. one Actually, Jackie's closer. I'm six foot feet, I think. Okay. I may be Alex, shrinking. that was 40 years they're shrinking. ago. <laughs> <laughs> that last time they did my height, they it come came out to six feet. Eight. So Adrian, Adrian is ninety-eight. So she's in the 98 percentile. So so she's nine. She's taller than 98 percent of kids her age. Wow. Really? This had her six year, her six year. Now, thing. does that yeah. mean she's going to be tall or does that just mean she just sprouted fast? She's, sprouted no, fast she's been because... she's been that way since birth. Really? Yeah, and she has big head too, like me, big brains. <laughs> <laughs> big head. I see. Big head. 
Um, yeah, so she so in her class, she's definitely the tallest. And yeah, there's there's a couple of pictures of her talking to her friends in class, and she's looking down at them. So well, whenever we see her with you, she's this cute little girl. I don't oh, think yeah. she's being she, tall. Yeah, she's big. Yeah. 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 That's why I was surprised that you when you said she was six. I thought she was older than that. Yeah, yeah. And when she was growing up, the funniest thing is, you know, she's walking, obviously two, three years old, but people would start talking to her, you know, and, and talking to her, like, oh, you know, da, 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 you know, start saying some stuff to her, not just what's your name, but and she would just look at them because she didn't know how to speak yet. But people thought that she was so tall that she was so big already that she knew how to spoke to speak. She was older, yeah. yeah. Speak, yeah. spoke, spoke, spook. Yeah. <laughs> Mandy has what two kids, right, Mandy? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh I'm huh? five seven. Dad is six one. And the kids are how tall? They're both five five. Five five. They're both five five? Yeah. I thought they'd be tall. That's average though so for they're, women. They're both, they're both women, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually the average height for women. Okay. So, well, that's strange. My both well, my daughters are taller than their mom. Yeah, I'm taller than them. How I'm tall five, are you? Five seven. Five seven. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And Marjorie, you're how tall? Well, I used to be <laughs> five six and a half, and I rounded it off so much that it became five seven on my license and everything. And when I go to the annual with my thyroid doctor, he measured me and he said. You're five, four and a half. I said, how could that be? He said, I was five, seven. He said, you remember five, seven. <laughs> you know, Alex, I got to do a conference call here. I'm going to just leave you guys on, so. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye, Lynn. Yeah, my mom was the same way. She was the same height as me. Now she's Lynn, is, Lynn is keeping his picture up. He's just got a conference call. Oh, I thought he was leaving. Yeah. Shrinking is a problem that happens when you're older. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really shrink. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 I have. We have a poll. We have a poll, a post in the garage. And so we've been measuring, you know, so I measure the kids every year. And I measure my stuff and I just put forever. Because I always put the <laughs> every age that they are, and I just put mine brain forever. I'm getting smaller. <laughs> I'm getting smaller. Mm -hmm. oh. Do that as a joke. It's called force perspective. Um, so anyway, um, um, so Shecky, have you been doing, you haven't been doing anything amazing. I talked to Shecky, what, no. one week at least, maybe twice. I talked to him right after the show here. And, uh, I, I asked him, I think yesterday, so what have you been doing? And he said, nothing. nothing. <laughs> Reading. You know, and I, I feel guilty lately because I've been going after my walks as often. And um, uh, because of the weather, I, mean, I don't know, I'm just not perky. perky. And, uh, I, but I, I, he doesn't even go out at all. Well, so, I have a house. And when he I goes out, to. he uses the car. So he's not getting any exercise. <laughs> Wait a minute, you have that treadmill thing you bought. How's that yeah. going for you? <laughs> I really haven't used it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great for hanging Wait clothes. Wait a minute. Hanging clothes on, on the side. I perfect. have somebody. I, I still don't let, I still don't have clothes on it. I will go back. I will. <laughs> oh, that's that. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's talk to Marjorie. <laughs> How's your uh, what's what's that called? A, a Peloton. A Peloton. Ooh. How's that Peloton? It's about ten days since I've been on it. When she first got it, she was doing the Peloton every day. This was for about okay. three months. I got to give you credit. And she was doing an hour, okay? And she was she was just sweating like that. Then I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, uh, I go in there. The Peloton goes, Marjorie, where's Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie? And I go out to Shecky's place, and there are no footprints on that treadmill. Uh, okay? <laughs> so. I admit it, you know. <laughs> mm. Did I buy anything for exercise ever? No, not really. I, 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 I does his bicycle. Well, I, went by the, I went by this basic theory. I told this to Richard Simmons, and he almost had a heart attack when I told him this. Uh, uh, he, he said, do you exercise? And I said, no. And he said, why not? I said, because if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. <laughs> 
And it was like I had to put a stick in his mouth to keep him from ch- swallowing his tongue after I said that. You know? Well, it seems like his body is more or less worn out. <laughs> you could say that. Of course, we haven't seen him lately, have we? That's what I mean. Walk around his shorts. You know, I, 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 my, my latest thing is I'm going out of my way to make sure that I don't see people who were big stars, who were very sexy and hot and everything that I used to get a, a you know, a Woody over uh, today, because then you begin to see, you look at them and you go, how bad do I look? <laughs> you know? Um, and what I saw yesterday was an interview with, and Marjorie will know who I'm talking about, and so will Shecky, Carol Baker, <laughs> who was baby doll. Yes. Was maybe the sex symbol of the of that era yeah. back in the what 50s? Late 50s, early 60s. I think it was, I think, yeah, I think, yeah. It baby was, doll, no. I think it's 58. Baby doll's 58. Yeah. 1958, I think. Yeah. I mean, sexiest woman in the world at that point, married to a friend of ours uh, who recently died, Jack Garfine. I saw this interview with her. She is now 87. Mm. Oh my God! What the fuck happened to her? She's eighty-seven. What do you expect? No, but you know, look. Sometimes there are people like. Oh come on, Olivia De Havilland looks great at one hundred and four. Exactly. Are we... Ma- Marcia Hunt, who's one hundred and three, looks terrific. One hundred and four. One hundred and four looks terrific. You know, maybe a little uh, has to use a cane or whatever. Yeah. But I mean. I looked at Carol Baker and I, uh, well, of course, she, you know, she was married to a friend of mine. It didn't end well. So I was very happy for him that she looks like she looks now. Uh, but I mean, I went, if she looks that way, how must I look to other people? You yeah, know? but I always said if Marilyn Monroe had lived, what do you think she would look like now? Oh, worse than, Gin- wor- worse than Ginger Rogers looked. Do you ever see Ginger Rogers when she got older, people? Yeah. Does anybody know who Ginger Rogers is? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. This is the age test. Oh, man. She just, because she didn't like aging. So she kind of always made herself up and wore the wigs and everything rather than just a a lot of these women like Marcia (laughs) Hunt don't really go out of their way to make themselves look pretty. They don't make themselves up and everything. They just have a certain bearing and they look terrific. You know, yeah, they, they have some of those people go to the car shows <clears throat> like from American Graffiti. <clears throat> Candy Clark. Candy Clark was the blonde uh, yeah. Played Debbie. Yeah. And, and American Graffiti. Yeah. And she goes to all the shows and she's like 72 or 73. And she yeah, looks I saw her. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I, I see and talk to her all the time when we are at the, the shows and she looks no wrinkles. She man, she went out with David Bowie. She went out with all these people back then that she has on her Facebook. And yeah, she looks. Gorgeous. My question is, my question is, has she had work done? She doesn't look like it. But but when she was young, that age uh, without a wrinkle, I would say yes. Well, she has wrinkles here, but you can't. You know, it's not. Well, like- you know, they've had one too many facelifts. <laughs> they have a beard. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> Well, look at Dolly Parton. She's I like I, she had work done, but she looks pretty good for her age. Yeah, she does look pretty good. Yeah, but you can tell she's, she's had 74 work. now. Yeah, what about Kenny Rogers? Oh, my let God. Me, let, me, let, me, let me ask the authority. Oh, Echo, that one was, how yeah, old Kenny is Dolly Rogers Parton? Was the, Echo, how old is Dolly Parton? Dolly Parton is 75 years old. Oh. Would you like to hear where Dolly Parton was born? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and Dolly Parton had surgery. Yeah, she many, many. <laughs> yeah, but some people who have plastic surgery look like shit. Yeah, well, you know what, yeah well, he doesn't. He looks good. You know yeah. what happens is they get one too many. Barbara yeah. Walter is Barbara Walter still alive? She's still yes. Alive. She's still, yeah. yes. I would hate to see her these days. But as she got older, they get this line right here from too many facelifts. Well, like, Joan like Rivers. Invitation. Yeah. Joan Rivers. Yeah. 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 John Rivers. Uh, uh, but so, Joan Rivers started doing it after a while just because it was uh, a, a constant joke about her face. She lift. did a lot, Alex. Huh? Uh, but she but she owned it. Like she, she she owned it. She didn't hide didn't it. Did she I mean, die getting plastic surgery? 
no. Yeah, no, no. I think so. getting a colonoscopy. No, 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 no. Endos no. endoscopy. endoscopy. Oh, okay. Endoscopy. Oh, down the throat. Yeah, oh, down the throat. Man. And they took yeah. pictures. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Mandy has her hand up. Yes, Mandy. I was just a comment, and you know, obviously, all these women that get the work done. Kenny Rogers was an exception, which is very sad because he was a very nice looking guy. But Bill Clinton looks shocking to me. I mean, he just looks like a feeble old man now. Yeah. It's, yeah. I know he's been sick, yeah. but and him, but another person I really admire that you know hadn't done anything, and it's because obviously he's a man, Robert Redford. Red and he somebody, looks terrible. But that's what I'm Red saying. He just does. So beautiful. And he just gave zero shits. Like he just said, yeah. I ain't gonna yeah. no, but, but I mean Robert look Redford looks pretty good for his yeah, age. I think so for Hold being on, like Hold on a second. Echo. How old is Robert Redford? 80. Let's Robert see. Redford is 85 years old. 85. Oh, 85. <laughs> wow. Did he say 85? Yes. Oh my. Yeah. But then you got uh, somebody like Sidney Poitier at 95 who looks great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, he looks pretty good. You know, uh, I mean, uh, but it, it's a quite, I don't know how much work they've had or haven't had done. Yes, Mike. Uh, we started this conversation with Richard Simmons. He's 73 right now. So, okay. Um, <laughs> but if, if you how want to. Den how old is Denzel now? Okay. He's getting Echo. Up how old is De Echo? 59. How Echo. How old is Denzel Washington? You got the answer. Denzel Washington is 66 years old. 66? Wow. So the one that I, I, I think, though, and she's got work done or whatever, but I look at Jane Fonda at 83, and I'm just like, yeah. oh, She had yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. She had a lot of, a lot work. of work. Yeah, yeah. but she looks good. Oh, but but she you know, I, I, don't, I don't hold it against somebody who's in show business who gets the work done. She is you put know, together. As long as they don't try to do it to look young. As long as they just try to do it to look good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, look Jane good for Fonda, their age. Plastic yeah. surgeon, what? did good, and Lily Tomlin because she looks yeah. really good too. She looks better show. today than she did when she was younger. <laughs> <laughs> we're outing. We're right now outing the Grace and Frankie fans right now. Right. Um, no, but, but with Jane Fonda, that's a. It, I mean, how long was she viewed as? an icon for exercise, right? Like yeah. Jane Fonda is both. She's like, yes, take care of the body, but also nip and tuck where necessary. And man, she's found the, yeah. she's found the secret. I yeah. agree. Well, I, I think her. I heard her comment about having work done and she said, it's, you know, it's self-defense. I'm, I'm in show business and it's self-defense. <clears throat> so but also for her videos for years What do you years. Guys think of Madonna? Well, oh, Madonna, I always she, thought she looks pretty good. I've seen her on Facebook a lot. I never liked the way she looked to begin with. I never did either. You know, I never felt she really had a thing going there. You know, when she was on the MTV Video Awards, she looked like she got her ass done. Though, did she get her ass done? <laughs> on the MTV Awards, she had her ass done. <laughs> we talked about this. She was on the MTV Video Awards. She opened it up this year because it was like the 40th anniversary or whatever. She opened the thing because she was on the first one. And when she turned around, she did the entrance. And when she turned around and walked away, you're like, holy shit, she looks more like Kim Kardashian than Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> cringy. All I know is what was on Saturday Night Live, they had uh, Kim Kardashian on the show. Oh, and they took a, a shot from the side. I'm telling you, from the waist up, she's gorgeous. She's got a wonderful body, everything. From the waist down, come on. Anybody <laughs> find that attractive? Everybody finds that attractive right now. In really? That, it, they're getting their asses. They're spending thousands of dollars to get their asses to look like Women that. getting their asses filled up. Pumped yes. out? Yes. Why, why don't women just realize we love you the way you are? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, that, that all this nip and tucking and everything, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for other people's perception of you. And, and you shouldn't do that. Yeah, you know, Alex espousing yeah. the Billy Joel just the way you are. Thank, like, thank I, you. I, I, would <laughs> never, I would never ha I have any uh, uh, surgery done on my face. My argument on your eyes. Oh, wait a minute. That was for medical reasons. <laughs> oh, right. oh, remember uh, Tori Spelling. Tori Spelling said that her, her parrot attacked her. 
Yeah. Back, back in the eighties or nineties, she had yeah. a nose job done, and she said it was because her parrot attacked her nose. Well, did this eye work <laughs> I had done make me look a little younger? Yes. No. No. I would also say that it's easier for a guy uh, who's married to Christy Brinkley to write a song called "I Love You Just the Way You Are." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think he, I don't think he was married to her when he wrote that. Though, did he? Maybe not. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, um, here, here's something I, I want to bring up because Shecky is Mr. Comic Book. Uh, Superman is going to be bisexual? Yep. Yes. yes. Not Clark Kent, his son. His son, yeah. Oh, you mean his son? His son is now, quote, Superman. Right. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But that was like Superboy? No. No. no, no. Oh, yeah, he was one of the. He was super. Yeah, it's an alternate. In the Titans, kinda. He, he, this... No, he was not in the Titans. Okay, so that 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 Superman in the Titans or Superboy is a. Combination. It's a different one. That's Connor Connor Kent, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. So, hmm. so anyway, this. No, this son... is Jonathan Kent. Uh, Jonathan Kent. Okay, it's the but son of now... Lois Lane and Clark Kent. But he's now officially Superman. Yes. Oh, okay. And he's bisexual. Yes, and so is Robin. Oh, the newest really? Robin. The, the newest Robin, not the original Robin. Yeah. Right. Tim Drake, I guess. I think that's yep. the newest. Yep. Why do we even? But Tim Drake is in the Titans series, but he's black in Titans, but he's not black in the comic books. Well, here's right. my question. Why are we dealing with the sexuality of comic book characters? Yeah, why do we give a fuck? <laughs> why is it important to give them a sexuality? I mean, we never had well, they think they'll the sell 10,000 and... gay people, I guess. So, well, you know, we were so excited. Okay. Hey, we have a gay superhero. I don't they... know. Was there line. ever an issue of DC Comics that came out where Lois Lane was blowing Superman? Come on. But there was a story. <laughs> They were romantically involved, right? They, so they were, they're married. They, they were romantically involved. And no, they were they're married. married. But there was never. Whatever. I'm just saying they probably want to have storylines where there's a romance. The picture that when I saw the story, the headline of the story of Clark Kent's son or whatever. Yeah. The picture of the a cartoon picture of kissing, of two men kissing. Yeah. So, yeah well, that's very, right. that's very nice. And that's wonderful. And it's a. a, a, a Hi, day. Brian. Right. I, oh, I, you're gotta going go. to get... I gotta go get my little monster. Yeah, Adrian. Oh, oh okay. Say hello to the little monster for me. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody. Before you go, wait a minute. Before you go, before you go, Brian. I'll get yes. Uh-oh. Look at this. Uh -oh. Wow, you look so short. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Nice. Those were all her little drawings on the, all right. on the studio door. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. Brian. Thank okay. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Yes, 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 Mike. I would throw out there that the reason that you're seeing all the diversity in comic books right now is the mm -hmm. two biggest comp comic book companies on the planet are also now owned by two of the biggest media conglomerates on the planet. Warner Brothers owns DC, Disney owns uh, Marvel. Marvel. And the diversity in all of their platforms trickling down, and I think that's why. This, it's just the wokeism that you were talking about before. I need to represent everybody and everything. Movies, TV shows, comic books, it's happening everywhere. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, didn't at and own something and they just sold it, right? Home box office? Well, then it, TV? It, HBO and Warners and all that, at and just sold. Yeah, but at and owns owned DirecTV. Yeah. Owns DirecTV, yeah. Owned. 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 Yeah, that was their stage. Can't they just send out a memo of who's what now? I mean, I'm I'm losing all track of it. You know, it. Oh, it's all owned by everybody. Was the world. <laughs> it, it, but but I mean, uh, Warner's owns um, a lot. A lot. A okay. Lot. <laughs> music, music publishing, all sorts of stuff. HBO, I don't know. Bigger, DC. Bigger Disney. Uh, Marvel, uh, or rather, rather uh, Disney owns Marvel. Yeah. So, okay, I'm getting this all straight. Here. I don't know who's bigger though, Warner Brothers or Disney. It'd be interesting to know which one's bigger. Well, I think the, Disney. Here was a wonderful thing that I got in the mail. 
uh, they told me it because I bought a new iPhone. Okay. And, oh, I, oh, I'm, uh, and I bought a new iPhone that my AT&T account will allow me uh, to get a uh, home box office uh, for free. But I already subscribed to it through FIO. So how do I can't unsubscribe to that because then they'll raise they, because I don't have the package. They they'll yeah. start charging me individually for everything. So it'll wind up yeah. costing me more to take their deal. I hate this a la carte TV thing. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, the fact that if you want to get money down, you got to take like five of these services all at once. Yeah. If you get rid of one of those services, all the prices on the other ones go up. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. What was that? That's uh, idea. <laughs> yeah. So what did we talk about yesterday, Steve, that maybe they would be interested in here? I guess we were just talking about all the, you were talking about teaching. Yeah, I was talking, we were talking about a lot of the woke stuff. We are talking about the article in the Times about these Broadway shows that need to change their scripts because they might offend somebody. So Rafiki in The Lion King can't be referred to as a monkey because he's a black <laughs> actor. <laughs> oh, God damn it. But he's a monkey. But he's a guy playing a monkey. Right. But All right, so fire the black guy, get a white guy to play the monkey. they like that better? I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I think a Chinese person would be good. On Saturday Night Live, they had the Bee Gees on Saturday on a sketch, and they had two of the Bee Gees played by an Asian person, and I think a woman was the other one. Why are they allowed to play the Bee Gees when if that same actor went out to play Kanye, a white actor was to play Kanye, all hell would break loose? Right. No, I'm, you know, that should offend Australians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we were, we were just talking about how <laughs> it's just gotten ridiculous, you know? And I, we, I was talking about my friends who are comedians who just, they don't have an act anymore. I'm sure Slayton's not going to be working anytime soon. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I asked him, he said, you know, he says there are a few places that are hire going to hire me. Uh -oh. He said, but basically, I can't do my act in a college anywhere. Oh, you know, I'll be booed off the it's stage. You know, we we were talking about you. Look at what Netflix was going through with the Chappelle special. Well, I think yeah. he's trying to bring this to a head to try and save comedians. I think he did it on purpose. I think he's trying to get the conversation to a place where people can still have that freedom of speech. I think he totally did it on purpose. Well, to, to Netflix uh, credit, so far, they haven't seemed to comment on it. You they've, know? Commented, but, and then they, they've commented the right way. I mean, the CEO said that, you know, he supports, that he knows there's a difference between hate speech and comedy, and he's going to stand behind the special for now. It's getting hard for him to do it, though, but he's, so far, he's been good on it. Yeah, but I mean, these people at Netflix are, we're going to quit because uh, we don't want him. What, what is yeah. that? <laughs> I mean, well, I, then quit and go away. Bye. Yeah. You know, you, you I, mean, want... I, I, I thought Bill Maher put it well. I mean, they had so they had this protest where like two or three dozen, you know, trans workers from Netflix went on a walkout. Shouldn't you be proud that Netflix has three dozen trans yeah. employees? That's pretty progressive. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, all these, uh, uh, I, I have to hand it to Netflix that they're handling this well because most other companies would immediately run oh you know uh, well it's it. also money right Chappelle's bringing them a lot more money if they if they take that off they're going to That's upset a lot true. more people than if they leave it on there's the argument out there that Chappelle has pissed off a f and I hate to I'm not minimizing anything like I don't want people offended but he's pissing off a few thousand very very vocal people versus a legion of people who would still support him and don't care and he's bringing that to the forefront. That's what some people are saying. Well, I, I, always I, I, I don't know. I also, I watched this. We watched the special. And then we heard about the controversy that followed it. And we couldn't figure it out because we well, didn't see well, that it was offensive. Say that he was a lie. He, he said, I'm not right? going to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you know, I mean, Alex, in your business, I'm sure you've had, um, you know, small groups or vocal groups come in and try to get you off the air or others off the air and they're they're effective they get them off the air well, i was mentioning to steve I've, I've talked about this on the air before to steve yesterday about the uh the time i defended 
Sam Kinison on my show saying Sam, Sam Kinison is not homophobic. And all of a sudden here comes glad and they want to have a meeting with the station and how dare Alex Bennett say that. And we don't think he should be on the air because he thinks Sam Kinison isn't homophobic. Now, wait a minute. Number one, I'm not being accused of doing anything except saying that I don't think so-and-so is homophobic. And I, I, I got caught in the middle of that. And this was 30 years ago, mm -hmm. 25 years ago. And it was a few dozen people that were doing that to you. And the tens of thousands that listened to you were, in, you know, were not bothered by it. So well, that's I, mean, I was simply defending Sam Kinison, saying that I know the man, I know he's not homophobic, and that he makes fun of everything. That's the right. job of a comedian. Yep. But you think as an old comedian, I shall make fun of just about everything. But this is why you're not hearing people really come to Chappelle's defense. The only one I've heard is Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. has nothing to lose right because he's making gazillions of dollars and he said i know the guy he doesn't have any hate in his heart it's just no it's comedy but yep. no one is coming forward you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. um did you see the special at all rick with no i still haven't seen it all? it's very good it's, it's yeah. really good it's yeah not, it's not his best but it's, it's great that he should have to go down for this one when there were better ones but then he, again he was doing this all along so I was going to say, I think it's because he had an agenda in this one, whereas his previous ones, he just wanted to be funny. And this one here, this he one, he did a whole slice about making fun of this lesbian, you know, or, the, or was it trans or lesbian? Yeah, making it's trans. 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 And uh, it was very funny, you know, and he was, I think he was trying to make a point through it. And after it was all said and done, he says, Marjorie said, he said, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm through talking about this, you know. I'm not going to defend, basically, I'm not going to defend what I say in the name of comedy. He's, he's offered to sit down with the disgruntled Netflix employees, but, you know, it won't happen because he'd make mincemeat out of them. You know, they yeah. can't really, they don't, they don't really have an argument, except they don't like it. And they're entitled not to like it, but, you know, hey, fine. They're allowed and to. They made there's a an office switch Netflix. on the television. Well, they're allowed to dress in the, in, to, uh, as the gender they want to be at sure. their job. And then they're going out and protesting because Netflix has him on. It just doesn't make sense. You know, you should say, well, you know, uh, in spite of it all, this company treats as well. And that's all that seems to matter. But why? We're walking? Well, hey, you know, don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. <laughs> but uh, how would, uh, if, if uh, Letterman were on the air today, and that whole thing that went on with he and his... Uh, oh, well, he'd be off the air. Yeah. You, 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 why do you think he survived it then? Was it the Times allowed him to survive it? Or I think he handled it well. He handled it very well. I think he thing. handled yeah. it well. Yeah. In other words, basically, that guy tried to extort him, and he immediately called his lawyers, went to the grand jury, and went on television and talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he'd be and, off the air. I don't think he'd be off the air because no one complained. If somebody would have complained on the staff, then then probably we'd be in trouble. But if they, no Dave would have to think about whether he was even going to mention it on the air. OK, there'd be a lot of thinking about that. But wouldn't he mention it on the air without telling the network? Like, did he? I don't think he would tell the network. I think he'd just talk about it. I, did he oh. tell the network ahead of time when he when he went on the so, air and I don't situation. think so he did well, call a meeting of the execs of our show like an hour before the show mm -hmm. saying I'm going to go on television tonight this is what I'm going to say yeah but well, I, mean, I had no idea they could have pulled the episode too because it was taped live to tape right and by the way there were yeah. protesters outside the Ed Sullivan theater I mean like a handful no, sure. that was during the that was during that the, the, that woman who ran for vice president. Sarah That's Palin her. caused more protesters than Letterman oh, Palin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's it's. Uh, but it was also funny, you know. You, we know we would watch the feed because we had a camera on the protesters, and they're just standing there, like you know. It, and then the minute the camera went live, they're, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's amazing. Hey, you got curly hair today, girlfriend. So I yeah. went to the office. Yeah, but it's also very curly today because it's going to rain. It's going to pour. It's yeah. going to rain like crazy. Yeah. And 40 mile an hour winds they're talking about. Yeah. Hey, so 
feel bad. I've always learned as a, as a West Coaster that when New York gets a nor'easter, that's really bad. Like, it's it, that's, well, that's what's coming a nor'easter. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Or, as, as, well, you know what? The mayor put out one of his bullshit, you know, <laughs> be wary things, and they edited him this time. If you're in a basement, go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. All right. Well, lots of uh, helpful prayers and energy for all of our East Coasters there that you guys don't get hit too hard. <laughs> Anyway, it's gonna be a couple of inches of rain. Big deal. Or, or, or Shecky refers to him, El Blizzardo. <laughs> <laughs> that comes from Dave. Yeah. Like, will the subways flood on you guys? They the can, might. Yeah, before. But I don't plan on going down there in a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> like this, being the uh, Broadway line thing. has grates on the street that go right directly onto the platforms. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Big, My wife is, is right now sailing. The storm of the water. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. I, this is so nice. I just look forward to this. I just, you know, I like you people, you know, except for the woman I'm married to. That's a different story. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. wrong, uh, wrong fingers, Marjorie. Thanks to Shecky. Uh, I appreciate your. When it's uh, your broken. Being here. And uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Steve Bender, wonderful having you here and wonderful meeting you yesterday. That was great fun. And I hope you're not a fan of mine anymore and now you're a friend. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Uh, Edward Berger, good <laughs> That's <you>. right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, that's all, folks. That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. Thank you, Lynn LaFrisco. Uh, Jeff Stein, always wonderful having you here. Scott Boddicker, wonderful having you here. S Trucker Steve, uh, we're glad to see you. You're, you're surviving nicely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Marjorie, it's nice to see you're surviving our marriage nicely. And uh, <laughs> Mandy, thank you. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye? I'll give, give a big wave goodbye as well, and I will uh, get out of this, okay? Okay. Bye -bye. okay.